Have you ever been caught in a storm? I'm not talking about just a, a typical summer thunderstorm. I actually uh, love most thunderstorms. The, the sound of the rain and the, the sight of the lightning followed by the, the clap of thunder. It's just, it's mesmerizing to me. But I'm not talking about a storm you enjoy. I'm talking about if you don't find shelter, you think you might die. That, that kind of storm. Have you ever been in something like that? A couple of my kids think every storm is that way. Uh, the first sign of lightning, like I'm outside watching the storm while they're curled up in a ball thinking we're, we're all going to die. The storms are, are a fact of life, aren't they? Like no matter where you live, at some point or in some way, you're going to encounter a storm. That's not only true physically or in nature, it's true spiritually and in our personal lives as well. At some point, Everyone goes through storms of life. Everyone does. Loss of a job, sickness or disease, a wayward child, the death of a loved one, whatever it is, we all face storms in life. Where is our hope in that, in the midst of the storm? That's what I want to talk about today. As we end the Christmas sermon series we've been in called There Is Hope. If you don't know, my name is Jeff Manis. I am the lead pastor here. And if you're a regular attender and you're tuning in on this Sunday off, or if you're a first-time guest uh, just checking us out, I'm so glad that you are tuning in. I hope you had an amazing Christmas and are ready to head into the new year. And speaking of the new year, uh, we're going to be back to our regular Sunday schedule on January 5th with our 9 a.m., 11 a.m. service and 6 p.m. service as well. On this last Sunday of the year, I want to talk to us about our hope in the storms. I mean, as much as we would love there to be no storms in life in 2020, that's probably not going to be the case. Like, all of us are probably going to face some kind of storm. My storm is different than the storm you will face, but we're all going to face storms. Like, storms are coming. We, we see that in Scripture. Proverbs 10 verse 25 says this, When the storms of life come, not if they come, but when they come, the wicked are whirled away, but the godly have a lasting foundation. Isn't that a great promise? And what is that foundation? I mean, if there is a foundation in the storm, I, I want to know what it is. Well, it's, it's not a what, it's a who. Specifically, it's Jesus. In John 16, Jesus is recorded saying this, I have told you all this so that you, that's you and I, may have peace in me. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows, or we could say storms. But take heart, because I, Jesus, have overcome the world. Yes, Jesus promised that we would face storms, but he also said that we can have peace, we can have hope, we can have a foundation in him even in the midst of the storm. That's, that's huge, that in Jesus there is peace, in Jesus there is hope in the storm. It actually ties perfectly into our theme verse for this sermon series. Matthew 12, 21 says about Jesus and his name will be the hope of all the world. As we've learned in the series, the, the name Jesus in Hebrew literally means God saves. Matthew 1.21 says this about Jesus, uh, speaking of Mary having Jesus as a child, and she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. And then in the series, we, we learned the word saved used there in Matthew chapter 1 is the Greek word sozo. And we looked at how deep this word sozo is, how powerful it is. It, it means to save, but it also means to heal, preserve, rescue, deliver, make whole. So in the series, we've talked about how Jesus is our hope because Jesus is our healer. He's our hope because He has a solution for our sorrow. And He's our hope because He saves us from our sins. And then today, I want to end the series by, by giving this big idea. Jesus is our hope 
because he's our foundation in the storm. Jesus is our hope because he's our foundation in the storm. When the storms of life come, the wicked are whirled away, but the godly have a lasting foundation. So we've got to ask this big question, how is Jesus our foundation in the storm? How is he our foundation? The main scripture is Matthew 14, 22 through 33. And we're going to uh, walk through this story and look at three ways that Jesus is our foundation as we finish out this, new, this, this year and head into a new one. Matthew 14, starting in verse 22, says this. Immediately after this, which was the feeding of the 5,000, Jesus insisted that his disciples get back into the boat and cross to the other side of the lake. That was the Sea of Galilee. While he sent the people home. After sending them home, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. Night fell while he was there alone. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away from land, for a strong wind had risen, and they were fighting heavy waves. About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them, walking on the water. So Jesus is our hope because he's our foundation in the storm. How is he our foundation? Well, the first thing I want to see from the story here is this, that he shows us himself. Jesus in the storm, he wants to show us himself. Verse 25 of our main scripture says that Jesus came towards them walking on the water. In Mark's gospel, he, he says something from, from the same story. He says it this way, Mark 6, 48b, About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them walking on the water he intended to go past them. Does that not seem funny or at least odd to anyone else that he was just going to like walk past them? Like, like he was just going to leave them out there? It seems kind of cruel, doesn't it? Ironically, that's how a lot of you might actually view Jesus in your storm. You might think it, that, that he's walking out there as if he could do something, but he's just going to walk by, not really caring about your storm. Well, that's actually not what it even means in that text. It's definitely not what he wants to do for you. It doesn't mean that he wanted to leave them there in the storm. It actually means he wanted them to see him walking on the water in the storm so that they would know he has power over the storm. He wanted to show the disciples himself. One of the study Bibles I have the ESV study Bible said this in the footnote about this story. He meant to pass by them, not so they would fail to see him, but so they would see him walking on the water, thus giving visible evidence that he is God. Jesus is our hope because he's our foundation in the storm. And how is he our foundation? Well, he shows us himself. In our storms, he actually reveals who he is, that he is greater than the storm, that he is God even in the storm. That leads into the second thing I want us to see here. Number two is this, he steadies our hearts, that he's our foundation because in the storm, he steadies our hearts. Matthew 14, verses 26 and 27 says this, when the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. In their fear, they cried out, It's a ghost! But Jesus spoke to them at once. Don't be afraid, he said. Take courage. I am here. I absolutely love this part of the story. Jesus said, Don't be afraid. I am here. Or when you look at the original language, it, it can literally mean, Don't be afraid. Take courage. The I am is here. Does that sound familiar if you know the Bible? I am was the name God gave himself all the way back in Exodus when Moses asked God, who should I say is sending me to these people? God said, the I am. I am has, has sent you. And so here the disciples were, terrified in the middle of a storm, in a helpless and hopeless situation. And Jesus comes to them walking on the water, and he doesn't tell them, take courage, I'll make the wind stop. 
Like he would make the wind stop here in, in a bit, but that's not what he said or what he initially did. He didn't say, take courage, I'll never let anything bad happen to you, because that would have been a lie. Like in this instance, yes, he does protect them, but we already read how Jesus told them in this world, you're going to have many trials and sorrows. You're going to walk through the storms of life, like bad things, they're, they're coming your way, but take heart. Like I've overcome even the storm. I'm bigger than the storm. So he didn't say, I'll make the wind stop. He didn't say, you'll never experience anything bad in life. He said, don't be afraid, take courage. Why? Because I am here. I, I'm literally with you. The I am. God is here. That's what Jesus, we are told, is called Emmanuel. God is with us. This, this all reminds me of John 16, which we read earlier, where Jesus said, I've told you all of this so you'll have peace in me. You're not going to have peace in your circumstances. You may not have peace in your situation, but you can have peace in your soul. When the storms of life come, and they will, the wicked are whirled away, but the godly have a lasting foundation. Jesus is our hope because he's our foundation in the storm. And how is he our foundation? He shows us himself. He steadies our hearts by giving us peace. Not peace in the absence of problems, but peace because his presence is with us. And then Matthew 14, 28 through 33 says this, Peter called out to him, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. Yes, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water toward Jesus. It's incredible. But when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. That word save, by the way, is the Greek word sozo. Sozo me, Lord. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. You have so little faith, Jesus said. Why did you doubt me? When they climbed back into the boat, the wind stopped. Then the disciples worshipped him. You really are the Son of God, they exclaimed. So the third way I see Jesus as our foundation in the storm is this. He strengthens our steps. He shows us himself. He steadies our hearts. He strengthens our steps. Can you imagine being there in this moment? I mean, Peter steps out of the boat in the middle of a storm and walks on the water toward Jesus. Have you ever wondered how far did he get? Does it even really matter? I mean, has, has anyone ever even taken one step on, on the water? The, the answer is no. In the history of mankind, only Jesus and Peter have ever walked on water. And notice too, the storm had not stopped yet. The wind and the waves were, were still crashing, but, but I imagine Peter must have been thinking, I'm not just going to endure the storm. Like with Jesus, I can actually enter the storm. I have the ability to engage the storm and not just survive, but thrive in the midst of it. I will not be overcome by the storm. Only one problem. As bold and as courageous as Peter was, he got distracted. He took his eyes off of the I am and put them on the wind and the waves and began to sink. And what did Peter cry out as he sank? Save me, Lord. Sozo me. And what did Jesus do? Ridicule him? Well, you shouldn't have taken your eyes off me, you bozo. Like, good luck getting back in the boat, right? No, it's not what Jesus did. Immediately, even in that moment when, when Peter took his eyes off Jesus, immediately Jesus reached out and grabbed him. Didn't let him drown. Pulled him back up and got back in the boat. And then the wind and waves stopped and the disciples said, Surely you are the Son of God couple things I notice here. First one is this. How did they get back in the boat? Like if Peter walked on water to where Jesus was, 
it probably means they had to walk on water to get back to the boat. The Bible doesn't tell us this, but I believe Peter walked on water again to get back to the boat. Maybe this time hand in hand with Jesus. It's a pretty awesome thought. Second of all, yes, the storm stopped when they got in the boat. But the point isn't that the storm stopped. The point is these disciples acknowledged Jesus as the only one who could stop it. You really are the Son of God. You really are the only one who can sozo us, heal us, carry our sorrows, save us from our sins, or rescue us in our storms. As we end 2019 and and head into 2020, I want us to remember when the storms of life come, and they will, the wicked are whirled away, but the godly have a lasting foundation, that Jesus is our hope because he's our foundation in the storm. He shows us himself, that he's God even in the storm. He steadies our hearts, that he's with us in the storm. He strengthens our steps, giving us the power, like Peter, not just to endure the storm, but to engage it, to thrive in it, not just survive through it. That we have the ability to walk on the water, if you will, with Jesus. I want to pray for us as we close out our time today and close out this year that God will remind us of Jesus being our hope as the foundation in our storms. Father in heaven, I thank you so much for each person that's tuned into this message. And Lord, I pray as we close out this series, close out this year, and head into a new one, that you would remind us, God, when the storms of life come, our foundation is Jesus, that he reveals himself to us in the midst of the storm. He steadies our hearts by being with us in the storm. And He strengthens our steps, giving us the power not just to endure, but to engage the storms of life and actually not be overcome by them. Jesus, thank you so much for being our hope in the storm. We love you and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen.